Good morning. It's turned out nice again. Mother, how's it going, guys? You all right? Hey, hey, hey! Look, look, look! Slava Ukraini. All right. Privit. How's it going? You okay? Uh, it is a beautiful day outside today, and I will see some of it today because I'm going out to get my hair cut. Yeah, I'm going to get the barnet cut this afternoon. Uh, well, 11.30 a.m. UK time, but we will do a live stream this afternoon. All right, um, three o'clock, three o'clock UK time, uh, for sure, <laughs> for sure, hey, hey, for sure, Rafa, bless him, Rafa. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, well, let's give some shout outs first. Um, Jen, thank you for supporting my stream yesterday. Only Jen supported my stream yesterday, can you believe that? Jen, why would I be without Jen? I love Jen, Jen's amazing. Um, Watty, thank you, Watty, my man. Watty is my man. Hashtag no homo. Uh, Saturday night uh, streams, steams, whatever you want to call them, um, they're not the same if Watty's not there. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I, he's a good man. Uh, Watty, uh, thank you. Kylie as well. Um, Kylie is my friend in Chicago. Yeah, she's amazing. And she's visiting Spain soon. How cool is that? Um, oh, Kylie, thank I hope you see this video, Kylie. I really do. Um, she's all right, is Kylie. She's a bit, she's, she's a bit of trouble though. You know what I'm saying, guys? <laughs> Thank you, Kylie. All right. Uh, we got Eddie Cox, uh, Wilkins as well, Ian Jarvis, um, Popsis Koi, Popsis Koi. I can never pronounce that name. I, can I just call you Popeye? It's a lot easier. I do appreciate the support, brother. Uh, and I think I've already uh, given a shout out to Malin Graham, Clive Roberts, and Martin Mason. Martin, all right. So. How are you doing? You all right? Got some good news for you, really. Uh, well, it's not really good news for you, um, but it's good news for me. So do you remember I said to you, like, you know, I've got, I've got this tax to pay this week or some government bill. Do you remember? I received a text message from the government. It was legit. I knew it was legit. Um, and uh, saying you've got to pay today something like 470 euros or something like that. You know what I mean? It, I, I just round it up, so I'll say 500 euros, something like that. You know what I mean? It's just short of 500 euros. And um, I've already got two payment plans running, uh, you know, contributions to the government for six months. And each one of them is about 250 each, but a little bit less. So what I always go like, you know, 250, 250, 500, whatever, right? And I've been, you know, like squeaky bum a little bit, like, because I've got to pay them two 500s today, uh, two 250s today. And then they sent me this other thing for 500 saying that's going to be paid today. I'm like, oh, I thought, how the fuck am I going to do that? You know what I mean? Uh, so I was in a bit of a stress. So I'm, I messaged my accountant, you know, and said, what, the, what, what what's this? I, how, what, the, what do they want now? Anyway, he replied and he said, no, 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 no. It's the two amounts combined together that they're going to take off you on today's date, which is the, is it the fifth? My watch is flat. I think my watch is broken. It's been, oh no, it's turning on. It's flashing. What does that mean? That's not a good sign, is it? Does that mean it's flat? It's been on charge all night. And then I put it on charge in the lounge because I thought it didn't work. Oh, it's doing this now. What's that mean? I don't like, I don't like this. Um, I don't know what date it is. It's probably the 5th of April, I think. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, what was I saying? Anyway, I don't know. So basically, I, you know, today I've got to pay them... Um, just short of 500 today. Fuck, how would you get by in life, guys? It's fucking nightmare, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And um, one's gone out, but the other one hasn't gone out yet because I ain't got enough in there. So, uh, But I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You know what I mean? I'll just move stuff around. But, you know, what is it? Rob Peter to pay Paul or something like that. So we'll get on a credit card or something like that. So I've got till, um, I think I've got till one o'clock this afternoon to uh, to find it. So uh, Charlotte is, uh, my daughter is uh, busy behind the scenes you know, uh, trying to help with that front. So, but the thing is, right, all I want to do in life is pay me bills. It's true. And yesterday, someone commented on here, right? I know you guys say, just ignore them, but sometimes you can't. And the reason I don't ignore them is because other people see their comments and might think, wonder what Doug thinks about that, you know? So this, this numpty yesterday said, you're making too many videos Right, so I'm, I'm like, you know, you shouldn't be making a video about this. You shouldn't be making a video about that. And I replied, so what the fuck? What the fuck has it got to? You can't come on here and tell me what I can and can't do. All right, or and or 
what my uh, she gone shame uh or what the community the people that watch these videos the morning briefings they're my most loyal people right what they you know you can't tell them what they want to hear what they want to talk about or anything do you know what i mean i was like yeah. and i replied and said look i ain't I ain't really got time for this, mate. You know, I don't know if you're being facetious, if you're being smart, or whether it's just, you know, like a, a passing comment. I don't know what you mean, like, you know what I mean? What? And he was like, oh, you know, a uh, bit touchy. You're making videos, grifting and all that, right? Uh, you you know, I can say what I want kind of thing. No, you can't, because if you come in my lounge and insult me or my family, I fucking knock you on, you know what I mean? Nah, well, because I'm passive. But you know what I mean? You wouldn't walk into someone's lounge and, down the street, would you? And walk in and sit down in their lounge and go... I think you should turn your lights off at eight o'clock outside. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't do that. So what? why do people think on the internet they can come around and tell you what the fuck you can do? Now, people that support the channel, I take on board all their feedback. Even people that, you know, that just pop in and, and leave a nice comment and say, I'd love you to make a video about this or whatever. I, I try to accommodate, but a lad yesterday left... Um, a comment yes, and he said, give a shout out, don't come in Ireland or something. I, said, I, mean, I did that in one of my videos, right? Don't know him from Adam. He's not a channel supporter, a channel member, or anything like that. So, and it, and it annoyed me that he said, like, grifting. You know, like, I put all my time and effort into the website and the YouTube channel, the podcast, because it's what I love to do. Anyone that's followed Cop Talk from the 90s know that it's, it started as a hobby. And it's still run as a hobby today. But guess what? The grown-ups, we have bills to pay. Right, so if I'm going to spend all day doing this, which is what I do, right, I have to generate revenue. I have to generate revenue, but I don't mislead like these fuckers. I don't sell products on here. I don't think in the video description there won't be a single link to 25% uh, off this ball shaving product. There's nothing like that. I don't do anything like that. Do you know what I mean? All I've got in, in the video description is a list of people that support me because I want to thank them. I've got a newsletter that's free, which has no advertising and I don't sell anything on there. I've got links to support the channel and my efforts, which is the equivalent of buying me a coffee or a beer. And why do people begrudge that? I don't begrudge that. You know, I first got into doing videos because of a guy called Paul Robinette. He's called Renetto. Google him, uh, not Google him, search on YouTube. R-E-N-E-T-T-O-O. R-E-N-E-T-T-O. He's a friend of mine now, right? And we've been friends for many years. And he was the original king of YouTube. He was the biggest YouTuber at the time. Now he would pale into like, you know, like this compared to these uh, big professional things. Excuse me. But this was when YouTube wasn't about movies and music and everything. Uh, it was just vloggers, you know. Excuse me. I've, got the, I've been drinking um, my tea and, uh, and my coffee. Uh, it just makes me a little bit, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so... Um, and it was back in the day, you know, before we had iPhones and mobile phones and things. So he used to walk around with a laptop, you know, vlogging his life and stuff. Uh, and I used to get so much entertainment. But he doesn't do it now. He's on Instagram. And he puts little shorts out on that now. But I followed him for years. And I felt like I knew him. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I watched him succeed and I watched him fail in life. I watched him go through, uh, you know, a divorce and meet new girls, and kind of parallel to what's happened with my life, really. Highs and lows, relationships breaking down, good times, bad times. He's just lost his brother in a house fire, and the family perished with him. Not everyone, but, you know, several people died. His brother went back into his house to try and save his kids or whatever. Uh, I've not read the article, so I don't want to. It'll depress me. But I've seen him go through trauma. I've seen him, his marriage fail. I've seen him meet a new girl, and he's happy, and... There was one time when he was in a bad place, you know, and I sent him $100. I was like, yeah, I know, that helps, man. Because he gave me years of entertainment. And I've always encouraged him, said, please, set up a Patreon. I, you know, every month, I'd happily, you know, chuck you $10 or something like that, whatever I could afford, to watch his content. Because he was brilliant. And he inspired me. If it wasn't for Paul Robinette, Renetto, I wouldn't be making the videos today. Now, what people don't understand is... Yes, there are a lot of people on YouTube and the internet, um, X, whatever, that are just here to, to generate revenue, right? They just want to make money. They'll do anything to do that, even if it's lying, right? Now, I don't have a problem with anyone 
making money. It's up to them. Do you know what I mean? I know how much effort goes into this. But anyone that's followed me from the start will know that back in the late 1990s, maybe early to, you know, 2000, 2001, big companies were offering me, you know, uh, six figure sums to buy into Coptop, buy Coptop, but still retain me. Uh, and I remember being flown to Sweden, you know, meeting people from New York and sitting in this huge room, this conference room, just me and, well, and Maria that I was with at the time, my childhood sweetheart, right? And she was like, I remember when we went, when we got there, the way they looked after us, she was, she looked at me and she went, what have you done? I went, I don't know, because we had fuck all, we lived in a little terrace house, we had nothing. You know, one time, around that time when I started Cock Talk, I remember one day, one Christmas, I had 27 pence in my pocket. That was my, ex that was all I had, was 27 pence. Couldn't get a mortgage. I had to get, a, my first house, my, 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 my first mortgage, or our first mortgage was in the name of someone else that did it to help me and us. We, we had nothing. I had a car that was 200 pound. It was a Ford Fiesta. It had no handbrake, uh, no insurance, no tax. No MOT. <laughs> Sounds like the starting credits, 20 fools and horses. And I started Cop Talk as a hobby and it took off. First month of doing Cop Talk, I think in advertising, it, it generated about £30 or something. But I didn't care because it was my love. It was what I loved. Do you know what I mean? And back then, what these fuckers don't realise today is there was none of this. There was no social media. Google didn't exist. YouTube didn't exist. Facebook didn't exist. X didn't exist. Nothing fucking existed, but Cop Talk did. And for the first time ever in the world, Liverpool fans were able to get really close to the club because of me. I created a Usenet group. I was the first to do everything. And I got so much joy from going to like reserve games. No one had even seen a reserve. No one had seen fucking Melwood. You might have seen it in a magazine if you were lucky. And I would go to Melwood and, and drive all the way from Scarborough, three hours there, I used to climb on the roof of the car. I know what you're thinking. And I was big then as well. Uh, and I'd climb on the roof of the car, take photographs, right? Maybe 36 in a film, was it? And then 36 on another or something. We didn't have digital then. Then I'd go to Boots and pay for an hour's processing. Then drive three hours home. And then individually scan every single photo into the computer. Every photo. Not like now where you just like, I can take a picture on it and zap it to that computer like that. And if it's a shit picture, you know, when you're out teching them, you can take another one, right? And I used to put photos online of the players training at Melwood, you know, running by the thing, and I'd be like, that's... No one, no one had seen this, it was all new. And then the satisfaction I got from it was, it was amazing. And that's why Cop Talk took off. Because I enabled supporters all around the world to connect with Liverpool Football Club more than seeing something, you know... Uh, you know, on, on on satellite or on the, you know, listening to something on the radio or something. And I got so much joy from that. I really did. And I never sold out. I wish I had sold out the way things have gone in life. Um, I wish I had. I look back and think, if only I'd done that, if only I'd done that. But then I wouldn't be here talking to some of the people, because not everyone watching this video will be someone that supports me. But the ones that are watching this that are having a cup of tea and going, ah, come on, don't, man. You know, like, they wouldn't be here. You know, these people wouldn't be there on the streams on a Saturday night. It's priceless. So it really upsets me when people come in and suggest, um, you know, you're doing it for the money. Because I'm not. If I didn't do this, I'm a bright lad, believe it or not. I could work on the internet and I would make money. A lot more money than I'm doing with this. The reality is I don't actually really make any money at the moment because... If I did, I wouldn't be worried sick today about how I'm going to find that money to pay, you know, my contributions. But I don't complain, I just get on with it. Because I just think to myself, you know, my dad, for example, he committed suicide because of financial worries uh, back in 1993. And, uh, you know, he wasn't insured. When I say insured, there was no policy or anything. So the, the mortgage wasn't paid off for my mum or anything. So me and my mum, it was just me and my mum. We had, we had a real fucking hard time. I didn't have a bedroom from that point forward. I used to sleep in the bathroom on a on a little mat because my mum had to let the rooms out and things like that. You know, we, but we worked together. So my attitude's always been very different towards money. 
And my mum, when she was alive, when we used to go to the supermarket, for example, we'd grab a couple of trolleys and she'd say, fuck it, son, come on, let's fill the trolleys, stick it on credit card, we'll worry about it later. And that's how I've been brought up. And maybe that's not the right attitude to have. Maybe you should be very responsible. But when you've experienced heartbreak um, because of money and things, you do look at it in a different way. And I think the most important thing uh, in life is health and the people in your life. Do you know what I mean? Um, so if I wanted to exploit, because I remember when I had that, what was it? No, it wasn't at that meeting in Sweden. It was, uh, I went to, for drinks in that evening, the very same day. And Tommy Smith, the Anfield Iron, was working for me then, you know, like he was my friend, right? As were various other former Liverpool greats. Uh, and I remember them, this guy stood in a bar in Sweden. Uh, and I remember there's, there was two parts of the conversation. One, I remember me being typical me, I went, I thought all the birds were blonde out here. So I said, more brunettes than anything. So the, the Swedish blonde thing was like a myth. I mean, this is important, right? And uh, and the other part of the conversation from him, this guy, uh, had said some, and he used the word exploit. And he said, what you need to do, you know, if we do business together is then exploit Tommy Smith and exploit the people that support your website. In other words, get Tommy Smith to do everything you fucking can uh, and exploit, you know, sell it to the members. Or sell it. Well, I, don't, I don't even know if we had a member's site then. I think probably did. I think we did actually because the dot-com bubble burst in the year 2000. And uh, I didn't like what he said. I thought, I'm not exploiting Tommy. Tommy's my mate. And, and you, you appreciate people that helped you. You know, the, there was a lot of former players that helped me then. They didn't have the or the, the the platforms today. Like today, we see every player, every opinion, don't we, from former players, we see every day. Betting sites, Sky Sports, this, that, the fucking other. There was no LFC TV back then. Peter Robinson, the Liverpool chief executive, I used to speak to him all the time on the blower. The chief executive of Liverpool Football Club would be on the blower talking about LFC TV and why the club wouldn't launch it. And I remember him saying to me, MUTV is losing money, Duncan, it's a waste of time, blah, 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 all that. Kenny Dalglish wrote to me. Kenny Dalglish was at Celtic. Wished me the look, all the look, best of luck with the website and everything. And there was existing players at the club um, that were playing for Liverpool at the time that were supportive as well. And I was going out for drinks with them on a weekend. And I'd be sat in my seats, my season tickets at Anfield in, in what was called the lower centenary at the time, six rows back, and there'd be Liverpool players warming up before the game, acknowledging me and waving to me. And this is me that started this all in a fucking bedroom at home, in a spare bedroom. And then people have the cheek to insult me today and say, this is the only reason you're here is to make money. I'm here and I'm going to monetize my channel if I can monetize it. Who wouldn't do that? So if Google will give you revenue to create content, why would you say no to it? doesn't make sense. Do these people that run the house, do they, if they're a, a joiner or a painter and decorator or something, do they go to people's house and go, I'll do that for you, love, no problem, it's fine. They probably would love to help people, like I try to or would like to, but they can't, you know, they would turn and say, well, I can't do that house for free, I've got to go and do that one because I've got my bills to pay at the end of the day. And if they then finish work and go to the bar and someone that appreciates their work says, can I get you a pint, Dave? Are they going to go, no, you're all right? Because it's the same thing, isn't it? This is just virtual. If people are not, you know, like my work and can see that I'm genuine and put my effort in, let's get, can I get you a drink, done? It's the same thing, right? I don't understand it. Um, I try to be very clear with everything. You know, the titles of the videos. I mean, we have, we have the odd giggle, but not very often. Because why would I want to upset the people that support me? The casual viewers, fuck them, don't care about them. I mean, that maybe sounds wrong. That's probably the wrong attitude. The casual viewers I care about if they want to be a part of our community, respect each other. Yesterday, there was a casual viewer, left a comment to one of you guys. You would have seen it because YouTube holds certain comments back. And he said, summit, 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 you clown. Now, I deleted that comment. Why should you have to listen to these fucking idiots as well? Do you know what I mean? We're not having that. But if someone, you know, a casual visitor comes in, likes the content, likes what we do around the, because I think we're different to the other YouTube channels, to be honest with you, um, then they're, then 
yeah, I'd love them to stay and convert them to be a, a regular around here. But it's the casual viewers are usually the ones that run the mouth. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, like everybody in this world, I've got bills to pay. And all I can do is, you know, people seem to appreciate what I do. They appreciate my content and they enjoy it. The YouTube channel is fucking free. Do you know what I mean? Like it's 99.99% .99 of my content is just available to everyone. When I could make video, think about this. I could make videos for the channel supporters, channel members every day and restrict a number of those videos every day. If I churn out nine videos, 10 videos, why I could easily keep two back, the juicy one. And, you know, as a ploy to get people to subscribe, but I don't, I never do that. And I know if you, if you, if you speak to any of the people that are supporters of this channel or are members of this channel, you'll see they've got a, a ball, a football next to their username in the comments. They will tell you that any video that I usually hold back is for one of the reasons which I say, which is either a quiet life, like, because I'm probably going to say something that people are not going to like. And if you'd put that out publicly, People are going to just, I ain't got time for that shit. Like that idiot yesterday, I ain't got time. He can't comment again. He thinks he can. He can see his comment, but we can't see his comment because I ain't got time for it. So a quiet life is so something sensitive that might get someone into trouble or something like that. And there is a third one. I usually say there's two reasons, but there is a third one. And this was used on, I think it might have been my last private video. Um, and that is that if you're reading a lot of text from an article the author of the article could be pissed with that because you, you're taking their work and then reading it to all and sundry around the world. Now, I would never do that to like a fan. You know what I mean? Like if a fan typed up a blog or something, I don't mean that. So we're not hiding it from someone like that or someone that's genuinely trying to make a living as a freelance or something. I'm talking about big, you know, BBC. The last article, BBC, we, we know what that means as well, girls, don't we? Um, I don't know why I looked at that bottle in the background then. Uh, the, B, the, the, the video that I did the other day was a, an in-depth article from the BBC, right? So, fuck the BBC, do you know what I mean? Um, it was a good article, but I just didn't think it would be a good idea to read it out to everyone. So I think I try to do things the right way. I do. And I know I know that people that support my content will go, don't, don't fuck it. I know, but I've got to say it. I've got to say it. And um, there's a lot of stress behind the scenes to do with this. Um, I think both of my marriages um, failed. The, the cop talk situation certainly contributed to both marriages for different reasons, uh, which I'll talk about one day. Not just that, because, you know, I was young and a fucking dickhead as well. And the second time my mum had died and I was all over the place for many years and still am. Um, but it's not all, you know, poor me, stress, well, am I going to, you know, it, it's not. There's, there's so many positives from this as well when it's going right. When we've got something to talk about and I'm churning out videos left and I say, I fucking love it. You know, so we had that bank holiday the other day, right? And there was nothing. I was sat around. Some people might enjoy that. Like, oh, well, why don't you just go out and have a drink with your mates? No, for me, I, I, I thrive when we've got something to discuss because the majority of the comments are from people, really, really nice people. Do you know what I mean? Um... And I've fulfilled every dream I've ever wanted to as a supporter over the years. You know, I've met all my heroes, uh, been invited to play at Anfield, uh, been out to America and Canada to meet the owners of the club, not this lot, but Gillette and uh, what was the other one called? Hicks. How could I forget him? Rother. The experiences, you know, and the ability to walk around the Anfield Stadium when nobody's in it, just you. Because you're there for whatever reasons, you know, I've helped the club promote things or or whatever, it doesn't matter. I've done everything, like your absolute dreams. I've been on a night out with Liverpool players that were my heroes in private clubs, not in a random bar as a fan, but invited. So I've done everything. I wouldn't do that now because I, really, I don't really look at footballs like I did when I was in my 20s, you know, my 30s or whatever. And that's not if you, you know, if you're my age and you're like, well, I'd fucking love to go for a drink with fucking. I get it. But you've got to remember, I've been done it for a long time. So, like, you know, it's kind of like sometimes I say, don't meet your heroes. Do you know what I mean? So, 
I hope I've explained things a little bit. Sometimes I hate cop talk and hate the whole thing. Um, and sometimes I never want to do it again. Sometimes I really fucking hate it, especially when things are going wrong with the club and when the fans are arguing and stuff like that. But the majority of the time I love it and I love you guys and people wouldn't be a member of my website or a member of this channel. They wouldn't buy me a beer if they didn't trust me and have faith in me. And that's a lot of people. And if they stop supporting me one day, then I know that's it. And then I will go and do something else. But I think that I will do this until the day I die. You know, let's hope oh, we're in another 25, 26 years. It'd be amazing. It'd be quite funny. <laughs> but, but let's hope, you know. I don't want to do anything else. Um, I will continue to, to do my best and to try and offer something different. Uh, and even though I don't put my own interests first, uh, as someone said the other day when, with the betting, um, I will continue as I am. And that's it. So I needed to address that. I did. And um, you see, when people run the mouse like that, it makes me want to go underground. It makes me go, do you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to do all my videos just for fucking people that support the channel. That's it. But then why should the ordinary people, good people that leave nice comments, like your videos, why should they be excluded? Because of one fucking idiot. Do you know what I mean? So we're not going to do that. We're going to continue as we're doing around here. And if you don't like it, if you're watching this video and you don't like it, you don't believe it, go fuck yourself. Because the rest of us are all right. And we have a good crack and we've got a good community here. All right. So that's that. Anything else? Going for me. Oh, did I tell you I'm going for my haircut? Yeah, so today's going to be a bit um, a bit broken. I, I, broken, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, I'm going to be in and out. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be about six now. What's happening to my watch? My watch is not working. That's great, isn't it? It's vibrating when I try and turn it on. And I can feel it going, but it's not. It's not turning on. <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere. If it was flat, you think it'd say? Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. That's the last thing I fucking need. Because this watch is my lifeline. It's a Fitbit Sense. I think it's called a Fitbit Three Sense or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, it's, it's not for fitness reasons, uh, but it's got like an heart rate monitor on it. I like it because it tells me if I'm going to die or not. <laughs> um, but it's my notifications. They are so important because I get a lot of messages. And when I'm with people, I can go, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. And I can read the messages while uh, while talking to them. Uh, so I really, really need to. Um... It's not turning on. Maybe it's flat. We'll uh, take it upstairs and and charge it in a bit um yeah so i've got a few things to do today um i won't be going out today uh, my friends will probably be out but i won't be doing that because i've got some arrangements tomorrow afternoon so i'm going out tomorrow afternoon um saturday night steaming streaming i would like to think that we're going to do that tomorrow night but um it won't be a late night if we do um i'm not going to do it over two servers. Um, I'm going to do it on one server to make it easier for it, just on here on YouTube, which means we won't be able to put on uh, any fancy music or anything because YouTube will tell us off. Uh, so we'll probably do that tomorrow night. We'll see because I am going to go up tomorrow afternoon. I've got something I've got to do tomorrow afternoon. And then I have a feeling that on my way home, I might call at my local, which is just around the corner from me. Because I haven't seen the boys for ages and my mate, his sister, died this week. And I've got a feeling he needs us at the minute. So I'm thinking I should put an appearance in because I haven't been to the bar for a couple of weeks uh, because of these fucking bills this week. Um, but my, my intention is to be live on here tomorrow night. Anyway, uh, I'll be live this afternoon uh, at three o'clock. I'd love you to come along. And I, I honestly don't know if what content we're going to be um, discussing today, uh, obviously we had a, a you know a, a fantastic outcome last night. So much of today is uh, is about that. I haven't seen anything of any importance from anybody. So there is a very 
high chance that maybe we won't have anything to uh, to get stuck into today. But I haven't looked at the betting. I haven't looked at overseas reports. Um, so we will play. Oh, if you could see Remy, he's laid on the set here over there. He looks so relaxed, bless him. The room's kind of like the sun is out. So the sun's coming through the windows, um, but only onto a tiny bit of the sofa, which ah, there is sofas really. And um, cause he comes down here with me. So there's a bit of sun over the arm and one edge of the sofa and he's kind of curled right up in that bit. So he's laid in the, in the sun, bless him. And I don't know if you heard that motorbike pull up, but he's, he's sat up now and he's, he's like, who the fuck is he? You know what I mean? He's a lovely dog, really. Someone abandoned him, you know, dumped him in a street bin. Can you believe that? Right. Um, has anybody watched this video to the end? Uh, hey, listen, now's a good time to become a Cop Talk VIP member, by the way. Um, and uh, <laughs> I really uh, need to pay a big bill by uh, by about one o'clock this afternoon, I think. So, um, actually, I'm going to find out what time I do have to pay that. I sent it to Charlotte. Who's just said we got some payments in, Dad? Yes. Um, the debit of AEAT is pending because there's insufficient balance. You have until fifteen thirty on the fifth. Yeah, that's the date. So I've got till two thirty UK time. So if you're going to be a cop top AP member, do it now. Now, I, I could haggle a little bit. If you email me, dunk at coptalk.com. And say, I'd like to be a, a VIP member, Dunk, but can't do it at a minute. I, I, can, I can afford this. I'll go, all right, mate, yeah, nice one. <laughs> if, it's, if it's after 2.30, uh, no. <laughs> no, I'm only joking, honestly. The, the, listen, I will. people know this. People know that I, I will look after everybody. Uh, we have members on the members website that have lost the jobs. And they've emailed me and said, Dunk, can't renew them. Sorry, pal, I'd never leave. But I can't afford And I just go... Stay where you are, and when you uh, get back on your feet, you know, buy me a beer. And you know what? They always do. No one takes the piss. So even if it's a year, two years, three years, they'll, they'll email me and say, Don't, thanks for looking after me, man. Get yourself a, a beer or whatever. So this this is it. We help each other, right? So uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to do this in real time. I'm going to log into PayPal because Charlotte says we've got some payments in. Oh, okay. I reckon I'm, uh, what's that in, what's that in? See, this is real time. So you, see, you can't be more transparent than me. Uh, I might be able to do it. One, two, three, pounds in euros. I'm about... Fifty pound off paying it this afternoon, so and I think we'll get that. Oh look, here, I just got an email through here. What's this? Well, this is, see, this is what I mean. I'm not gonna. Well, I can I can um, say this person's first name. This is an email that's coming before this video has gone out. Obviously, uh, this was sent to me at nine twenty six UK time. It's now 10 a.m. UK time. It says, I don't hope you're well, mate. I've watched your videos for many years and you actually inspired me to do something like your channel when I was leaving school in 2013. Already I'm like, oh my God. And think about what I said in my video, earlier in this video, when I said about Renetto, he inspired me. Let's see what he says. I'm sure I'm not giving anyone's identity away here. Although I never followed through with my sports journalism aspirations, I've always looked up to you and the way you go about being a Liverpool fan and human being, there's not enough dunks around. Enough of the bum licking, haha. <laughs> I would love to help you and would love more content. And then he asks about the VIP membership, uh, information, etc. A reply would make my day. You see the difference in people. <sighs> I'll reply to that. It's nice, isn't it? You know, when you get something nice from someone, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's good. I like it. I'm, I'm a big softer, really. 
Uh, anyway, we will crack on. I know that my uh, my most loyalist people who watch these videos, uh, these briefings, but that's not. It's not a criticism because to other people, because some people don't have time, you know, to do that. You know, some people work from home and can put the video on in the background or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, some people know that it's just a morning briefing, waffling on about something. It's probably got no Liverpool news in it, so they prioritise. So it doesn't apply to everyone. But I do know that the people that watch these videos are, you know, hardcore, like, you know what I mean? So, okay. I put some aftershave on this morning. I smell really nice today. I kind of can't get I kind of smell nice, man, yeah. I like that. This Saint Laurent, I think it was. It smells all right now. Go a bit of that eh, tomorrow. Yeah. Right, I'm off then. Long video. Dale, he'll be going mental. Hey, to be sure, to be sure, the fucking morning briefing is not very fucking brief. You know what he's like, Dale. Mm. <laughs> right. Let's get the fuck out of here. And uh, let's man the fuck up and, uh, you know, fuck them. Pay attention to the squad. People like that. See what I mean? People like that. Lovely. Really nice. All right, guys. Um, take care. And uh, we'll speak soon.